Kobe had this interview and he talked about um, losing and winning, right? Hey everyone, and welcome back to the 1% Better Everyday Podcast. My name is Jasmine. And my name is Matthew Cohn from Cohn's Graphic. We are the 1% Better Everyday Podcast, where it is a space where entrepreneurs can learn, connect, and win together. So there is a podcast that will help you grow your business to the next level. This is for anybody that wants to be an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs are already in business, or entrepreneurs have been in business and have been in business for years, and just need a space where we can vent, we can talk, and we can have conversations about things that we go through as entrepreneurs every day so you guys can find us on spotify youtube and we are on i want to say anchor um, but you guys can find us the links will be down below and you guys can listen to us on soon on all platforms i'm trying to get us on you on itunes so stay tuned for that we are on but itunes <laughs> we already not trying we, we are already are iTunes. yeah correct this we is the already. season <laughs> of manifestation remember that so the links will be down below and you guys can listen to us so I guess we're just gonna dive right into it. Today I'm feeling a little bit sick, so if you guys see my energy down, it's because of that. But today I really want us to discuss, you know, just relationships um, and business, especially as entrepreneurs, because I don't think that I've ever seen like another episode where they kind of talk about both sides of it. Um, well, what so, type of relationships? Are you talking personal, business, or both? Mm, all three. Okay. And, and yeah, we'll get into it. But some of the questions today that we're going to be like discussing is why is having an aligned partner important? Um, healthy relationships, because I think that's a, a lot. That's something that a lot of us haven't really seen or it's really, really rare sometimes. Um, and then, of course, relationships when it comes to social media. So we'll talk about that. But yeah, do you want to start off with um, what are some of the biggest things you look for in having an aligned relationship, whether it's business, personal, or any type of relationship? What's the three like things that you're looking for? Mm, you go first. Um, I would say communication is important with having um, any type of aligned relationship, especially if that's important for you. Um, consistency is a big thing because you become reliable and also you become uh, trustworthy once you're consistent with any type of relationship and I would say number three would be um, just being organized um, with your relationship as well whether it's uh, a bit like I said business partner personal partner it can be a relationship with money um, just making sure you're staying organized uh, and on top of things that way you can continue to have that relationship so I would say that would be my, my biggest things. Yeah, I guess for me it would be um, having aligned goals because I think as entrepreneurs we talk a little, we talk a lot about it actually how you really, really have to have a partner that understands entrepreneurship to even have a relationship. And I think when I met you, you know, you knew that I was in college, you knew that I really didn't have any time to really be going out like that. And if I did go out, it would be once in a while. Um, so I was already like on that path to college and everybody knew how hard I was working to graduate. So then just finding someone that kind of shared the same mindset or goals to, you know, just dream bigger and do bigger things that we have never learned in our life, especially as a, you know, someone coming from like a Hispanic background where I told him, which is crazy the other day, cause I'm, I'm just finding out stuff about my grandma now, but my grandma doesn't even know how to read or write in Spanish or English at all. Um, and so I tell my mom when she was trying to get her citizenship, but if it wasn't, and I asked my mom, I'm like, why didn't you, you know, teach my abuelita? But, um, you know, my, she just couldn't get it. And so even that, even learning how to read or write is a privilege. And I know I kind of got sidetracked, but I think, you know, just having the same goals and then, um, what else, like you said, communication, just having communication because I'm sure, you know, we've all been in relationships that we don't want to, but just something that was different from this relationship was that he actually communicates and he actually responds instead of, you guys know, we've all been through that, but where you get ignored for days or you don't get answered or you don't talk about it. So just really communication. I really, really appreciate that. Um, and patience because, you know, we're not perfect. I am not perfect, but he really does have patience with me and learning, you know, maybe she's not perfect at that, but she'll 
get it sometimes because, and that's another topic, you know, just having that balance because there's certain things that I'm not good at and he's really good at and there's things that you're really good at and I need help with, but. Yeah, it's, it's uh, just looking from the outside in, people always ask us about our relationship and what they like about it and what like it, but what they don't realize is our relationship works because we put in the work. We put in a, we put in the work, and yeah. we actually um, understand each other and have common interests and common goals. Um, it just simply starts with that, and then what is um, next level is just simply doing what other people are not doing. Right? That's how you take your relationship, any relationship, to the next level, is um, simply putting in the work that people don't want to do. They're too lazy to do it. Um, or they don't think that their spouse or, spouse or partner can do the work with them. That's another side that we don't look at um, is having a disconnect in, in relationships, especially when you got one spouse is an entrepreneur and one spouse is not an entrepreneur. That shit gets twisted real quick because um, one person has a sense of urgency to get stuff done and another person simply doesn't have the sense of urgency to get stuff done. And that can create a, a friction in a relationship as well. Um, especially when you have a partner that just simply doesn't understand um, the way you want to do things. Um, especially being an entrepreneur, you are already thinking outside of the box that everybody else is normally stuck in. So it's kind of hard to um, relate when you're talking to other people about those entrepreneurship goals. Yeah, and I and I was gonna say, um, I think in relationships, like even as women, we have to be willing to kind of change our mindset or grow as our partner changes. Because I think at the beginning, what really, really helped me understand his perspective was that at the beginning, I didn't have a business. I was just in college, so I didn't really understand that aspect of it. But when he quit, you know, of course I believed in him because I thought my dad has a business. You know, my mom has a business. I was like, you know, why? Why wouldn't he be able to do this? So it wasn't really like a second thought to me, but I didn't understand the entrepreneurship journey. It's a lot. And I don't think until you get into that space, you will ever understand it, even if somebody tells you about it all day. Um, because until you live it, it's a whole different experience. So I think that that's what really helped me like understand his experience. But also I think as women, we have to be willing to accept change and grow just because I don't know if there's a young mindset or there's like an old mindset but I just know that whenever you like sense your partner changing a little you guys always think that we always think that there's something wrong that there's something you know bad or that it's going to be a negative change when in all reality it could be the opposite it could actually be like a really, really good change a really positive change um, or your partner could just be ch thinking about your guys's future so I think, like I like I said, just really understanding your your partner, um, and just having the same goals and values. I think that's the number one key. Because that's, if you don't align in your goals, or if you don't align, like we're we're hustling really, really hard right now because we're going to, you know, see our, our rewards maybe ten years from now, maybe five years from now, or we're really, you know, putting the work because we know what we want. And if you don't have, I guess, like that same vision or that same goal you're always going to be butting heads because at the end of the day we can have disagreements but at the end of the day we know that there's something bigger than us if that makes sense like yeah we got shit to get done speaking of um that's a perfect segue into what to expect from your partner is there it actually expect in any relationship um since we're speaking on relationships like what type of expectations or should you have any expectations when you're going into any type of relationship with a job or with a partner or, or something in business boundaries yeah boundaries I number think, one yeah i feel like i really learned boundaries with you because you stated your boundaries so hard that it almost made me stay my boundaries a little bit harder like okay like we have to respect each other's space and time because especially as entrepreneurs like i think that once we started working from home you see each other all the time so I'm not trying to say that you get bored, but you do have to have a little bit of space, you know, without each other. So that way, to me, um, you know, you can kind of like miss each other, if that makes sense, you know, because we're so busy all the time. But at the same time, I feel like our relationship is so good that it's like we spend three hours away and then we're like, okay, back to, I don't no. know if that makes sense. But. No, it makes sense. It's, um, it's, it's also just knowing who you are as a person, right? 
um, especially if you expect them to have any type of boundaries um, within your relationship. And then um, just circling back to having expectations, especially in business as well. Um, when you have any type of client or you have a service or a product, uh, you just gotta make sure you are um, setting expectations towards who you're working with or who you're giving something to. Uh, that way there's no confusion, uh, again, in a relationship, making sure you have expectations in a relationship as well. That way your partner um, knows exactly what to expect um, out of you or out of her or out of certain situations. So that way you're just not looking at each other like, huh? Like mm -hmm. confused as fuck, not knowing on what's going on, so. Yeah, yeah. and I think it's like, a, it's a learning process too, because I mean, like I said, we're not perfect obviously, but um, back to kind of what you said earlier was that, you know, how do a lot of people think that we have such a perfect relationship? But I always say that I don't think it's perfect. I think it's just we put in the work, like, it's us. especially because, it's you know, us. again, you know, coming from a background where you've never seen a healthy relationship and you just seen people yell at each other, like, you really kind of have to step back and make sure not to do it again with your partner. Does that make sense? Because yeah. you will always repeat the, the patterns that you grow up with. And that's if you want to. Some people, well, and some people don't care. Some people yeah. don't give a, you know who. <laughs> but um, let's let's talk about um, who One Percent Podcast is for. Um, to me, my idea of One Percent Better uh, Every Day is I think of when every time I read that title and every time I typed it in, I think of Kobe. Kobe had this interview, and he talked about. Um, losing and winning, right? And in his concept, he talked about how one day you can wake up and you can win the game, right? You worked all this hard, you worked hard, win the game, boom. But guess what? The next day is gonna come up and you gotta do it again, it's vice versa. You can lose one day and guess what? You could be mad, emotional, whatever, and then the next day, guess what? You gotta wake your ass up and do it again. So that's that would be my definition, my definition, my idea, concept of 1% better. It's just simply every day when you wake up, making sure you get 1% better. Yeah, and I think that that's a huge, that would say that's, a, that's our whole brand because, you know, we always say, even if we're not perfect, at least I feel like we try to become 1% better every single day. Like if there's something that he doesn't like that I'm doing or something that I don't like that he's doing, we always try to communicate. So it goes just back to communication, but, to get back a little on track about healthy relationships, I mean, have you ever seen a healthy relationship growing up? Uh, I've seen both. I've seen healthy and unhealthy. And I actually think it's necess nec necessary for you as a kid or just growing up to see both sides. That way you get familiar with what you like and what you don't like. I think it's, it's just like yin and yang. It's gonna be good and bad in this world. Um, Based on your personality and your soul, you either going to continue to go down the path of bad relationships or you're going to think and be like, you know what, I don't like that. I want to go towards the, the good uh, relationships. But I am, I was very lucky and very blessed to see uh, both. Even when I, when I was younger and didn't realize it and when you grow older and realize that everybody's situation is different, I realized that there was a lot of healthy relationships that I actually was around and I just wasn't too excited about it because, you know, you, you a kid and you don't know shit. Mm -hmm. What about you? I think for me it was the opposite. I think I came from a background where, especially like in the Hispanic community, like and it's just crazy how often this happens, like especially to women in so many different cultures, but women usually just get married because they get pregnant, because they need to get out of the house, and you know, not to pick on any family members, but I know there's a couple family members where, you know, they just, you know, had a baby because they wanted to get out of the house. You know, they just got married because they wanted to get out of the house, and you're not really allowed to leave your parents' house until you get married. Um, so I think it just goes back to like a lot of machismo, so, I don't think I've ever seen a healthy relationship. Yeah. And how did that affect you? Because it could have went either way. It could have went positive or negative. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, we can get into like the whole marriage discussion because I mean, of this. It's up to you, honestly. I don't honestly. Know if we want to get into it. Because mm -hmm. people, like I said, people love yeah. our relationship, but then they, y'all should get married. And we'd be like, <laughs> No, we shouldn't. <laughs> I get it because some people say like in terms of like the, 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 the legal, yeah. you know, like the legal stuff. And I get yeah. that side. But I think that just the whole concept of it, 
I think that the word marriage has been so painted, pa- painted so ugly now in a way. Um, and I say that because again, it just goes back to our cultures. You know, if you go back and look, nobody was really getting married because of love. Like everybody was getting married. And this is not, you know, to laugh at it, but again, everybody just had to get married because they had to business. survive. It was a survival yeah. instinct. So to me, it's like, I really want to make sure that whoever I'm with, it's not just for a piece of paper. And I know some people say, you know, well, it's more than a piece of paper. But to me, um, I want to make sure that it is more than a piece of paper. Like it's a union. It's a partnership. It's, you know, do we have the same goals? Do we have the same, you know, thinking? Do we have the same habits? Like it's to me, it's a little bit bigger than a piece of paper, I guess. And we've talked about it. Um, Cause I've seen and whatever a lot our beliefs of... are, are, are our beliefs, but for some reason, I think people get so, again, people's, um, what is it called? Um, I just forgot the word. People's um, triggers come up or people will tell us like, some people will tell us not to get married. And so I think that people will always place their, um, what is it called? Their, um, I just forgot the word. People will always place like their projections on you. People always place what they think that is best for you. And so at the end of the day, I think that you should just do what's best for you and leave everybody alone, stay out of of their business. But that's just my opinion. Um, Back to the healthy relationships, I do think that it is important that, that especially kids see healthy relationships because I know that that's just how the cycle keeps going, especially in Hispanic families where, you know, your child just gets married again or they get pregnant again for the wrong reason. It just keeps going and it keeps following that cycle. So I think for Hispanic families, it is important, you know, I mean, for anybody, it is important to see a healthy relationships so that way they can see um, that they deserve better. Because usually when you see unhealthy relationships, you just fall back into those health- unhealthy patterns that your family. Yeah. family and marriage has. is not bad. Um, Again, go me going back to my seeing positive and negative relationships. I've seen positive marriages. I've seen negative marriages. I've seen people that have been in relationships for 25 years and never got married and they're happy. And then I've also seen people that's been together for 20 plus years and they ain't married and they fucking hate each other. So it's just like, it's... Um, I think you should define your own marriage. Yeah. I always, I, we always talk What's about it because we, we've talked about it before and we know that, of course, you know, we want to have some kind of ceremony. We want to have some kind of like union because to me, that's what it is. It's a union. Yeah. It's a union and of our lives. And celebrating with your family yeah. and being happy too. Yeah. Like there's people, I've, 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 as we know, I shoot a lot of weddings. Um, not all those couples are happy. Not all those marriages that I see are happy marriages. Like why be in, why be in any, ty- any type of relationship and be miserable is beyond me. Haha, ha, Davis, beyond me, but it's just, I don't, I don't, I don't. Yeah, like I said, I think you should do whatever is best for you and what makes, whatever makes sense for you. Because again, not every single person follows the same religion, not every single person follows the same, you know, diet. So why force everybody's beliefs onto everybody else? So whatever, me, whatever marriage and partnership means to you, that's what it means to you, I think. Um, as long as it's in a healthy way, you know, so. Um, now tell the folks where to. We forgot find a topic. Us. We forgot a topic. You're just gonna skip. What topic? Social media. Social media what? Yeah, social media and relationships. We got eight minutes. We social can talk a little what? bit about it. Social media and relationships. Social media mm-hmm. and relation and, and and relationships. Yeah, I think that's a huge factor in your relationship. Social media. Oh, social, social media. media can affect oh, your relationships. Affect your relationship. But, okay. Um, I think that. Well, let me just kind of say this. I think in terms of entrepreneurship, I think for us, it works really well because, of course, you know, as women, we're going to get in our feelings at the beginning. We're going to be like, you know, why are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. But I think that once you kind of, again, step into the entrepreneurship role, to me, now I know that, especially as a creator or someone that understands social media marketing and engagement, you guys have to learn to put your ego, like take your ego out of it completely because especially when you're a creative with social media you're always going to find something to complain about so i think to us we're so comfortable with social media now because again we know what we have and we're not going to do anything to ruin that does that make sense yeah i just i'm just on there for business um if i didn't have a business i probably wouldn't be on social media that's the whole reason why i restarted (laughs) um i see a lot of relationships um are 
problematic because of how they treat social media. So it's again, that goes back to expectations and setting boundaries uh, with your partner um, regarding social media. Um, you have access to my shit anyway. And again, I only use it for business, but that's just me. Not everybody um, has that um, amazing opportunity or not everybody um, gives uh, two flying Fs about uh, somebody else uh, feelings regarding what they do on social media. So it's it's weird because it's not real. <laughs> like it's a, it's a made up world. So it's just like, and I think that yeah. as a creator, like I said, you just have to learn to put your ego out of it because sometimes it has nothing to do with you. It will be other people and you just gotta learn to let it, you know, let it be what it is because you can't control everyone. And that's what kind of we talked about is you cannot control every single person. Like you can't, like the only thing you can control is yourself. Um, and as long as you're moving with good intentions, then I don't think social media really matters. And especially as in terms of content, um, Again, especially because as women, like, again, I think that I really, really learned how to put my ego out of it. And now I just, like, understand the business side of it. But as women that sometimes maybe you're emotional, that your man is commenting on, you know, other businesses or stuff like that, you really, really have to learn to, or not even, like, I would say not even commenting, but even in terms of the content, you guys have to learn to put your ego out of it because at the end of the day, it's content. And that's what we're there for. We're content creators. So... If you're not gonna trigger your audience to do something, then again, why are you on social media? So, and, and not everybody treats it like that either, or not everybody has that awareness um, to treat it like that either. So again, just having that conversation with your partner about expectations with social media, because that shit can get wild and nasty. I prefer to stay out of it. <laughs> and I wanted to put it in there just because, again, like especially with content creators. And I see that through other, you know, through other podcasts or other um, YouTube videos or sometimes I'm scrolling on TikTok and I see the comments um, of women, you know, just complaining about the content or stuff like that. And so that's why I say that is because in terms of content creators, I don't think you will ever understand it unless you're a content creator. Unless you're a content creator, I don't think you will ever understand what the purpose of the content is for. Um, and like I said, people just get in their feelings about it. But yeah. I think we covered a lot. Um, I wasn't feeling good, but I still showed up. So like I said, we're being consistent this year and we're trying to post at least once a month for you guys because I think this is kind of like really um, there, we don't post there once a month. There's a new clip dropping every week. Though. Every week for 1% podcast. Don't let her lie to you. Available <laughs> on YouTube. We got the shorts going. We got them on Twitter, we got them on Instagram, we got it on. We gonna put that. We gonna make a motherfucking TikTok for one percent podcast. Mm, but again, one percent better every day. That is our purpose. That is our goal. Each day you wake up, you get a blessing to be able to achieve your goals, and we got to get one percent closer to achieving those goals. That is the whole purpose. And again, back to who this is for. These are for. Um, we specifically made this being a, as a couple because we want to represent couple entrepreneurs um, and also setting ourselves aside uh, from every other single podcast or every other single business uh, interpretation of a podcast. Um, and that's, think- that's what's going to separate us from everybody else. And more importantly, sharing our story as uh, really, uh, and being in a relationship and on our entrepreneur journey as well. Yeah, I was I was just gonna say that, and I think that a lot of people will learn because you get to have two different perspectives, not only from a woman but from a man, but also from like a Latina background, mm-hmm. and then also from a black man perspective, which is really really important. And you guys know I'm a huge advocate of mental health so that's why i really really love this space because now we can talk a little bit more of the stuff that i really really do want to talk about but maybe i just i say that i don't have time but i just know right now is not the time to focus on my organization so through this i think that we can still touch some of those subjects so again this is for you know just entrepreneurs couple entrepreneurs just just anybody that you know maybe could relate to some of the stuff that we go through as entrepreneurs as content creators so Again, if you guys like this episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And my name is Jasmine. Matthew Cohn from Cohn's Graphics. And we are the 1% Better Everyday Podcast. So if you guys don't do anything today, make sure that you guys do one thing that will make you 1% better every day.
tomorrow <laughs> but thank you guys so much don't forget to listen to us on anchor um spotify and then youtube you guys can watch us you guys can actually watch the visuals but again the links will be down below and see you guys in the next video that was a really good episode damn we talked a lot <laughs>